that year, I think you had more positions than Ron Jeremy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did, uh, did, that, did, did that bother you getting moved a bit? No, I loved it. Did you? Huh? I loved it. Um, started off as striker. Uh, played centre mid for Motherwell. Started off as striker at Motherwell. Centre mid, left mid, right mid. Uh, went to Rangers. Basically the same. And at times, centre half. The, the St Mirren Cup final. We won one 0 Kenny, Kenny Miller scored the header against nine with nine men against St Mirren. I think I played centre midfield, right mid, left mid, centre half, and centre half of a three as well. Hey. So that was that really was at half time. I think Walter came in and goes right. You're going to go centre half now, and I'm like, Phew, my God, here we go. Right, no bother, gaffer. Mm -hmm. No bother. And I was I was next to Davy Weir, so it made it so much easier. Um, but getting chunted about. I actually quite enjoyed it, I didn't. Maybe it was the pressure of being a striker, the expectancy to score goals. Maybe I didn't like that and I liked to be moved about, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Like uh, Chris Boyd loved the pressure, uh, scoring goals, uh, thrived on it. And when he didn't score, he'd get pelters for it. But he liked that and it made him come out uh, more determined. Uh, so it just showed the mental, mental strength of him, but I liked moving about positions. It was quite a lot left wing. You played. Did you ever get a step over? Left, there? left wing. No, absolutely <laughs> yeah. no step. I don't. I still don't think I beat a man in my full <laughs> career. <laughs> <laughs> Even going to play with the kid, I can't beat the kid. <laughs> <laughs> so it was. Everybody says left wing. I wasn't a winger. I would play really narrow as a uh -huh. sort of centre midfield player. But yes, that position of left wing. Uh, was just diagonals and up and he'd the ball and <laughs> um, stuff like that. But never once have I beat a player in my life. And what position did you enjoy playing the most, especially for Rangers? Uh, probably the latter stages of my career, striker. Mm -hmm. I think I get 26 goals in the th when we, after administration, mm -hmm. third division, and then 24 goals the following year. Um, and I loved it. I loved I just seem to take to it and then I, I get moved back to centre half which I, I didn't feel that comfortable to be honest with you and, um, for a sustained period of time so it was it was, it was still good but I think striker was the one that I, striker left wing probably is my, uh -huh. my favourite um, Walter Smith leaves Rangers how did, uh, how did you take the news that, you, that Walter was leaving? Uh, just like everybody else in the dressing room but Got he taken aback, um, what we're going to do now, sort of thing. So we had to all group together and then obviously Ali got appointed, so, um, and we, we kicked on for that. Did the boys expect Ali to get the job? I think it was half expected in the dressing room uh, that he was going to get the job, because um, the, the rumours were, what word said, recommended Ali to get the job, so. Um, but he he was great as an assistant and and as a manager. Did he take to that straight away, going for the assistant to a manager? Because sometimes it could be a bit difficult, can't it? Aye, it can be. Uh, looking back, I think he took to it really well, especially with the, the demands and the pressure. Uh, your first job as a manager, uh, a club that size, uh, I thought he, he took to it brilliantly. Would he still have the laughs he would as an assistant, or did he need to learn to be more? I think split? it started it. At the start he did and then maybe realised he's got to take a bit of a step back uh, and be more of a, a manager and managing for distance sort of thing. And again, he done that, he done that well. You had Kenny McDowell next to him, didn't you? When I had Kenny. Like he was, uh, were you with Kenny? Uh, he was a coach. My under Kenny's great. Manager. He's a good, good uh, coach, isn't he? Uh -huh. Kenny, great coach, uh, great guy. Always having a laugh and he, he knew his football, he knew uh -huh. his football inside out. Um, obviously the administration, what was that like for you in the dressing room when, when you first heard the news? <coughs> Shocked, uh, mayhem, the administrators were coming in, it was sort of me, Griggsy would be holding the meetings, taking the meetings, what we were going to say, and you know what Griggsy's like, it's just aggression ripping at him when he's not, <laughs> he's not liking some. so the administrators would come in and they would be having a spiel, talking off, Posh and proper and Greg's would be right, aye, but what are you going to do next? What are we going to do now? We're not listening to you. You are full of shit, all the, all the rest <laughs> of it. So then that was when we would try to start putting it back on their toes. Um, but just happy that, well, 
happy that it all got sorted out in the end, I suppose. Uh, mm. The wage reduction was there and uh, for the full dressing room and it showed the, the, the team spirit and the togetherness that we had to do that, to, to help sort of save the club. Was it hard to keep focus on, on the playing side though? Huh? Ah, some days we weren't going in training, it was just sitting in and having meetings and about meetings and the administrators walking about and uh, we, didn't, we didn't trust them so we were starting to get a wee bit, not aggressive with them but short with them, um, the PFA were in having their meetings so it was, we, some days we weren't even training so and I think it reflected on the pitch but the fans I think it was Kilmarnock we played um, at home and the fans were unreal that day. It was like an old firm game that day because they, they came out obviously to back the club and our, that atmosphere that day was, was unreal. It's a lot for Ali to take in on his first job managing. First job, job expectation levels, that? pressure. Uh, he's such a big club, the demands of the big club and then that gets put on you. <laughs> uh, I don't know how he coped with it. Um, red wine, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really don't know to this day how he coped with the pressures. Probably having a mentor and Walter to to help him through it, um, and obviously the back near the, the dressing room and uh, everybody else. So it shows you how mentally strong uh, coach he was. What was your thoughts when all your teammates started to leave? Eh... Uh, Starting to worry a bit? No... No worry. Um, I think it was agents just saying, there's a sort of loophole here, you can get away, there's uh, a lot of money to be made for you, you, you won't be seen as a bad guy. Um, obviously agents will be, be getting paid for that and ultimately, it, it, happened, to, it happened to everybody. Um, I could have went across to the um, the Emirates, you know, no, no, Arsenal. London, no, no, <laughs> Arsenal. Yeah, I could have went across there, but I just decided to stay with a young family and stuff. And um, with my attachment to the club and and being a fan, I just thought it was the right thing to do. But others uh, decided to go because they were. I think the administrators had a part to play in that. Nobody knows the the, the full story, but administrators were sort of. Uh, pushing for that as well, sort of thing. So it's no the, the players that left it isn't it one hundred percent their faults that the that the, 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 they left the club. What was the toughest transition going to the lower leagues? What was the hardest thing? Um, I didn't find it that hard. Played in all the the, the smaller grounds and the, the players that were there that time had played in, in all the the so called smaller grounds. So. I played them with Motherwell or, or reserve football and against the team, so it wasn't a, it wasn't an eye opener to me um, or the rest of the boys. It was just the 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 intensity of the games was because you, you would watch them the week before um, and then they they'd be playing us and it's all oh, Rangers on town, so it's, they're playing it like a World Cup final, mm -hmm. and that's the same every week when you're playing with Rangers or Celtic. So it's I suppose that was something that the the new boys that come in had to deal with because they're thinking, oh, third division, I'm playing with Rangers, this is going to be easy. Where it was anything but easy because you're, play, you're playing a, a World Cup final every weekend. Uh -huh. Would you just have a laugh about some of the grounds or would it? We'll have a laugh about the, the size of the dressing rooms uh -huh. and stuff. And the one that stuck out for me was one of the first games we played was Breakin. I'd never played at Breakin before, and it was the big head you were wearing. Had a few nightmares in. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we, that was that was a big thing for me, and I was getting to learn about all the all the different stadiums as well. So it was good. Would you get a bit of stick for the boys you were playing against, or was it? Was oh, it like, always, uh -huh. always, always. A few good laughs uh, <laughs> with the boys were playing against some of the part-time boys. I was saying, I'm I'm walking the night, and you still no scored, and you're rubbish, and was, <laughs> all the rest. Uh -huh. It was. It was good par, good banner. During your time at Rangers, must have been your dream appointed the club captain. Um, how did that come about? Was there a conversation? Uh, well, Carlos Bocanegra was uh, the captain and there was rumours that he was um, leaving the club. And Kenny, Kenny McDowell came in to the dressing room. I'll never forget that. Kenny McDowell came in to the dressing room and he says, uh, Gaffer's what I want to be. Come on, hurry up. And I thought, oh no, what have I done now? So I went into the, 
his office, manager's office, he sat me down and he said, he told me a story about when Walter made him captain um, for a game and I'm thinking, where, where are you going with this? <laughs> What's happening? He said, so what I'm, I've got the privilege of asking you if you want to be the, the captain of, of Glasgow Rangers. Uh, I see he's a perfect fit and all the rest of it. And I was, I was quite emotional, uh, but I was trying to keep myself together and have the, the brave face, as, as they say. So I obviously accepted it, uh, gave him a cuddle, thank you, Dom, same with coach. I went out, and then it hit me as soon as I, I shut the door and I had to run all the way to the toilet, and I'm, I'm sitting in the sitting in the toilet cubicle locked and I'm and I actually a couple of tears in my eyes I was thinking my god because I, I, I wasn't expecting it and uh, to look back and say that I've captained the club uh, through one of the hardest times of its existence then certainly that's uh, that's one of the proudest moments in my career and the, the way Coyce had done that made it all the special but I was I was a little big baby crying in the Cubicle. How was that first game running at Ibrox as the captain? For all oh, the family was there. I think they were in the director's box at the time. Um, just pride. No, no nerves at all. Mm. Just complete pride. Um, full stadium, and I, I think I, I think I scored as well, which just it was icing in the cake. And we we got a win, and um, so it was that was probably. One of the proudest moments in my career. So when you get made the Rangers captain, Bowyhead fan, do you feel that extra pressure, even more? I did at the time, but running out that tunnel, I didn't. It was it was pride, and I I, I didn't. There was any negative thoughts uh, in my head at that time. But there, there is there's a big Barry Ferguson always used to say to me, uh, the captain's armband. He used to point to it and he says, "No many." No many players can wear this big man, it's too heavy for them. I've not got the arms for it, it's too heavy for them. I've not got the mentality and stuff like that. And, and it's not until you, you put it on and times are hard on the pitch is when you realise that, because you're the, the main one that gets the stick uh, for it, as Barry did all through his career, through the, through the bad times they had, to, and, but he had the broad enough shoulders to take that. And you said about the pressure of scoring goals, did you enjoy that pressure of being the, the main man? Aye, because I knew there was loads of chances coming, <laughs> playing, <laughs> uh, especially at home. And I think, I remember saying to Kenny McDowell, and he says, we're going to play you as a striker. And I'm like, Kenny, I'm no prolific goal scorer. I'm no a 20, 25 goals a man season. Um, which, historically, Rangers have always had. And he's like, don't worry about it, big man, you will score goals. I'm like, well, I don't think I will. <laughs> and then I, went out, and I think my first season, I got 26, and second season, up to Christmas, I played striker and then moved back to centre half. Um, I got 24. So that was quite a good return and something that probably I outdone my own expectations as well. See, um, you seem to self doubt yourself quite a lot for a guy that's played at the top level. Like everything you say that somebody gives you a bit of praise, you always turn it into a joke about a bad. Why, why do you think you're that way? I think it's just my upbringing. It's the way I've got to be. Everybody thinks that. Um, that don't know me or that's no spoke to me and it's uh, here's big aggressive elbows coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's just not the case. It's I've always played in a way a sort of aggressive style to go out and try and win a game of football and be competitive. And people like yourself are, are sometimes taken aback when when I actually sit down and, and speak to me and think, well oh, he is actually quite normal when he's and he's no one to fight, and he's no aggressive, and he's no... Um, I've, I've never had this supreme self-belief stroke arrogance in myself, but I think that's just uh, me being grounded in the, the way probably my parents have brought me up and the amount of doings my, my two big brothers have given me <laughs> <laughs> over, over the years. So I think uh, and nothing will change no matter what success comes or which has been. How did you feel the way you ended up leaving Rangers? Um, I felt I was as though it was my time to leave. There was a, a time in a game where the, the fans turned a little bit, a section of the fans turned a little bit um, and showed their frustration towards me. But I can, I can relate that to, obviously, firstly, I was a captain. The club weren't doing well. I wasn't playing well. But there was this rumour going about um, that I was earning all this money in, in these lower leagues, which is was just... 
a complete lie about the, the amounts of money that I was so-called making. What were you on about? <laughs> <laughs> no anywhere near what people were saying. But it was all, all just a sort of um, rumour mill that started and uh, started gathering uh, arms and legs. And before I know it, I was, I was making all this money and it was out in the fans' forums and out in the, with all the journalists and, and stuff like that. So, um, but it's something that, that I've learned that's made me stronger and I got a chance to put it right when I left and when I joined Kilmarnock. But it must make you angry after sticking through the club through some tough times to get that. It's just the way the, the, the club was at the time uh, and that's when I knew the time was to leave. Uh, I, knew, I knew I had to get away and get a fresh challenge and um, I've been in the Hall of Fame, won Play of the Year, had tremendous times, UEFA Cup final, Champions League won, Leagues, Cups, everything. So I knew that I had to sort of go out in a high before it started getting worse, if you know what I mean. Um, so uh, I'm glad I done that and glad I went on to a fresh challenge. See, just at the end, was it hard going for the player, the standard of the player that was there when you first came in to the one that was there when you left? Was it hard to play with that, that sort of player? No. Frustrating? I think you get frustrated at times. It was possibly different mentalities uh, for the for the change in the dressing room. You're, you're, you're playing with winners, uh, Steve Davis, Barry Ferguson, Chris Boyd, to, although Boyd was there the second time, um, to players that hadn't played to the standard that the players I'd mentioned had played to. So, um, you could see the difference in mentality and I think that was a little bit of the, the frustrating thing uh, and certainly the, the difference in, in the dressing rooms. Because you said you went through quite a bad run of form. Do you think that was down to teammates as well? Because it must I'm be not going to pass the buck. <laughs> I'm not going to pass the buck or blame it. But is it easier to tomorrow. play with Barry Ferguson and a Steve Davis? Oh, uh -huh. definitely. I think uh, especially, well, they two players. As soon as I played centre mid with both the players um, and in the left. <laughs> uh, and I think it's, it just makes the game so much easier. Um, always wanting the ball, demanding the ball. And you know you're just taking a touch and giving it to them and getting forward and getting in the box because they're the, they're the guys that can make things happen when you games. And um, Sometimes in that spell, people are passing the ball to me, expecting me to go and win the game, and I'm like, well, I'm not really I'm a match winner. I just get, I'm, a, I'm a water carrier. I just get the ball and get to somebody else <laughs> and go and try and win it back. So um, I think that was the, the difference that you're talking about. Some highs and lows then. So um, how would you look back on your Rangers career as a whole? As a massive positive, um, great experience, playing at the highest level, playing under Walter Smith, one of the best managers Scotland's had, um, brought me on as a as a person and a player, and getting to learn a wee bit of the demands away for the pitch um, and the expectations and the and the different pressures it can bring. As you were coming at the end of your Rangers career, were you always thinking about maybe management or coaching, or did you want? To I was doing going? my badges at Rangers. Uh -huh. I was helping out with the the 15s and the the 20s um, under Craig Mulholland and Kirky, and they helped me through my badges, and I thanked him for that. Uh, so I got my pro license, and then at the time ran out, uh, I get a phone call to see if I'd want to be an assistant at Kilmarnock. So I thought perfect offer, opportunity for me to go on the, the coaching ladder, sort of thing, and it was able to still keep playing as well, although I think I only played about 13 minutes. How were they 13 minutes? I, they were really, really bad. I, I think I've... <laughs> I played against Ross County and I think uh, I've made Jackson of them the players today. <laughs> got <these moves. laughs> I got these moves. <laughs> and was that just after that 13 minutes, were you thinking that? I knew my calf went and I knew because I had a bit of a dodgy calf and as soon as that went, I knew in my own head that's me, I'll, I'll, I'll no play again. So, and I seen the manager and I told him I just want to concentrate on the the coaching side of it sort of thing and uh, he was delighted with that <laughs> after that 13 minute. You just saved me an awkward conversation. <laughs> um, and how did you find being the assistant? Take that? Loved it, loved it. Uh, assistant with Gary Locke, then Gary's time was up, uh, had a spells interim manager and then Lee Clark came in, who's tremendous personality. 
and then he's went away. But I learned so much off Lockie and so much off Lee Clark. It was, it was great times. Was uh, has he been the assistant? Does it, does it prepare you for going into the managers? No. No. No, nothing does. Even interim. Interim manager was something that's so different. Um, Why? Different stages. There's no, on you? no I, th I think there's still there's loads of pressure on you, but still not as much mm -hmm. as being the manager. It's hard to describe. So you go first. I was first team coach at Rangers at the end of my career as well. For for some reason, although I didn't really do, <laughs> do much. <laughs> the cones. <laughs> um, and then being assistant, you feel you want to win, but you don't really feel the pressure. Interim manager, wee bit more pressure, but when you become the manager, that's when the, the that's when the pressure really, really hits home. It's hard to describe though. Is it just non-stop phone ringing all the time, twenty-four hour job? <sighs> non-stop, all the time. Some nights you're no sleeping. Didn't they see the kids? Didn't they see my partner? Didn't they see my pals? Just concentrating on formation, the team training. Managing the staff, managing the players, players coming to you with problems. It's just, it's, it was a whole new world to me. So you talk about the demands of management. I mean, talk us through a typical, what is it, six in the morning till, till 10 at night? Yes, well, I was, I was waking up. I was setting up my alarm for probably about five to five. Get up, get, quick shower gear Paper on. <laughs> Straight into the office. Uh, and it's watching videos of your next opponent. But I, th I thought at that time, I'll get in early and get most of my work done because the rest of the staff are no one. You've no got uh, players coming to see you and you can do a, a good bulk of your work at that time. Um, and still, during the day, give the players all your time uh, to help them with problems and stuff. So, um, And then, after training was done, you're preparing for a Saturday, you're preparing training for the next day. Um, you're thinking about your next opposition, you're thinking when they're playing, you're going to a 20s game at night, um, or if you're, you're playing somebody in two or three weeks and they're playing that night, you're going mm -hmm. there. So some nights you're not getting into half 10, 11 o'clock, and then it'd be the same the next day. So I've always been a hard worker, um, so that didn't really phase me, but when you put on top of that, the pressure of, having results, the pressure of the players being injured and thinking, oh, he might not be able to play my best player on Saturday, what am I going to do now? They change the formation, but this player can't play in that certain formation. So you need a strong backroom staff run about you. Um, but it's, it really was non-stop for me. Maybe I was doing, in reflection, uh, doing too much, trying to trying to do everybody's job instead of relying and, and other people running about me, which were capable of doing mm -hmm. their job for me, uh, or bits of the job for me. I was that intense and because it was my first job, I think, wanted to cover every single blade of grass and um, in hindsight, I wouldn't do that again, but the, the demands of it um, certainly are. Uh, Pretty high. I'm, I'm doing a course in it, you know, and it's um, it's about reflection as well, and it's critical reflection, and uh, there's different models of reflection and stuff, and I'm I'm doing that where you write it down and then you discuss it and stuff. So, and it's really it's really good, uh, and it helps you progress as a person. And knowing that if I'm going to go into coaching or management again, that that'll be a better play, a better person for it. Do you feel like you should have got a bit more time? No. Um, because it was a it was a conversation that we had, um, and it was a sort of mutual thing. So it wasn't as if I've I've just been uh, drop kicked out the door. <laughs> it was a it was a mutual conversation. I've still got a great uh, relationship with the board, who were brilliant with me, uh, backed me basically with everything I had. But I think in hindsight, I've probably ch tried to change too much. Uh, in a short space of time because I knew the club five, six, seven years had been underachieving. Um, some of the players that I'd brought in were moaning about the the pitch, so we moved them up to Largs, we were training up in Largs, we were trying to stay away from the, the pitch as much as possible, changing training, we changed the training times, um, trying to get a change of mentality in, so I think I was trying to change too much too soon. Um, and we just couldn't get that win. We were playing well in games, but just couldn't get um, the win 
and, uh, and the board were starting to show a wee bit of concern, but not enough to, to pull the trigger. And is it something that you'll continue to do, or do you think that's you done? Um, I'm actually not sure what I want to do. I'm still going through a sort of reflection process of what positives and negatives. It's, I think, 90% of all I know is, is football. Um, so I think I'll, I'll stay in it in some capacity. Uh, but I'm going to enjoy this. It's the first time since school that I've been out of job. So I'm going to enjoy spending time with the family, have a have a good Christmas, and then just see what the what the new year brings. Really, wish you all the best, mate. Whatever you do. Thanks Thank very you. Much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank Appreciate you. that.